What's going on guys? It has been a very, very long time since I've uploaded to this YouTube channel. It has laid dormant for the last three, four, maybe even five years. Um, and that is not because I have either stopped scootering or I have stopped filmmaking or photography. It is purely because everything that used to be on this channel, I have moved elsewhere because I now do it for uh, much larger companies other than this YouTube channel I started when I was a young boy. So as said, I am actually still within the scootering industry and I am still within the filmmaking industry, but now I work with companies such as Root Industries most notably and also Scooter Hut. Um, I have also worked with a bunch of different brands um, outside of the scooter world for filmmaking and photography, um, but all of the work I've done for them is showcased on their platforms, their social media, um, not here. So that is why none of my work over the last few years has been presented on this YouTube channel. But I have decided coming into this long weekend that I didn't want to spend four days sitting at home twiddling my thumbs because of the current situation in the world. And I thought the best idea would be to kickstart this YouTube channel again with some things that are going to be helpful to you guys sitting at home doing nothing with your time as well. Um, I hope you're doing something with your time, but if you're not, you can watch these YouTube videos and I think I'm going to just be bringing a bunch of tips, tricks, tutorials as far as camera stuff goes. Um, and let me know if there's any other types of videos you would like to see from me over the next few weeks, months, Maybe, who knows, I might continue on with this YouTube stuff after all this is done, but I do have a pretty busy um, life schedule, so we'll see what happens. For now, I'm gonna be focusing on some photography and videography as well as some editing tutorials. But yeah, this was a very last minute decision to make this. You should see the setup of my room. I literally have a lamp. I'm just, I'll show you what my setup is. So I've got my camera set up over here, but this is my lighting setup. I've got a cheap lamp that I found downstairs sitting on top of my computer chair because that's actually not my computer chair while I'm sitting on. And then it is also placed on top of uh, my other computer just so it's a little bit higher. And um, yeah, that's my very cheap DIY last minute uh, YouTube studio setup. So as you can see, it is very sketchily done because I thought of making this video about 15 minutes ago. All right, I'll stop blabbering on now. So let's get into this week's video. I don't know why I'm saying week because who knows when the next one's gonna come out. But let's get into today's video, which is going to be how I shot this photo right here. So this is a photo I have taken for my job at Scooter Hut and uh, as with all things right now, most places are shutting down and people are having to work from home, such as myself. So this photo was actually taken in my backyard um, because I couldn't really go anywhere else to take anything. So I came up with some creative ideas on how I can make a plain old boring photo of a wheel into something a bit more exciting, but within the restrictions of my own home. So as long as you have a cheap DSLR or camera that you can change the shutter speed on, a tripod, as well as a light source, that could even be, you know, the, the torch on your phone or a torch in general, um, as well as the subject to shoot. I use this wheel because it looks pretty sick for this style of photography, um, but you can use absolutely anything. Hell, you don't even have to use a scooter. I just thought, why not combine scooters and photography on this channel since that is what this channel has always been about. So enough of this boring talking, let's get downstairs and talk about how I achieved this photo and how you can do it at home yourself. Alrighty guys, so here we have our little setup for this photo. We obviously, one, have the camera. We need that to take such said photo. I've got just the stock 50mm Canon lens on here. Um, little nifty 50. You honestly don't need a crazy expensive lens to take something like this because we're going to be bumping up the aperture anyway. So you don't have to have a super fast lens. Most lenses will do. We've also got a nifty tripod for tripod reasons. Self-explanatory. And we've got this light here, which does nothing for the photo. It's just so I can illuminate my face. How you going? So, first thing we need, actually, most important thing is the product to shoot. So here we have um, some fusion wheels, which I'll be shooting for Scooter Hut's Instagram account. And just a quick side note, uh, keeping all of this together is my Root Industries complete scooter, complete with what you can't really see because the graphic's gone, but my very own signature deck. So that's something new since you guys would have seen me last on this YouTube channel. So the idea on what we're going to do to take this photo is it's gonna be a long exposure photo, which means that the shutter of the camera is going to be open for an extended amount of time. In doing so, it's going to let 
every bit of light that it sees within that extended amount of time into the sensor and it's going to bake it into the sensor and you're going to get the image like what I just shown you before. So the way that we achieve this image is obviously to start off with the slower shutter but it's also by introducing light into the sensor via either my torch or uh, my phone light or something like that. So what I'll do now is I'll set up the tripod and everything to be the correct heights um, and I'll set up the light sources that we're going to need for this photo and then I'll run you through some techniques to get the best out of it. Alrighty, so as you can see we now have the tripod set up at the correct height as well as the wheel in focus here and what I have done here is I've got some high quality um, uh, tubs that I got online from um, a very expensive camera shop. They're about 1500 bucks a tub um, and it's purely for holding torches like this for a setup such as, uh, I'm just bullshitting. Obviously this is just an ice cream tub and this is just an absolute cheap, probably like $3 from the bloody thrift store uh, torch which is shining on the backside of the wheel here which is going to create a super cool effect when we take one of these shots and so to show you the back end of this camera which is dying slowly my bad is you can see as i say it it dies What I'm finding really difficult right now is the fact I only have one tripod and I want to set this camera down on a tripod to film myself, but this tripod is holding this camera, so I have to find something else to be a tripod. <laughs> Boxes, what are they good for? Absolutely everything. Look at that, that's the best we're going to get. That's a Panasonic factory. I don't know which one of these are fully charged because I'm incompetent at charging things. That one's completely dead. Off to a good start here. I don't know if this is the same battery I just had. Dun, da, da, da. One bar. Okay, if it's not this battery, then we're sort of screwed. Oh no, we've got one bar. Okay. Okay then. Well, so we have one battery to work with here. If there's anything you're going to be taking away from this video is that prepare in advance when you're doing things like this um, so things don't go wrong like it is right now and I'm way too far into this video to give up with so back to what I was saying so here's the back end of this camera and as you can see the awesome little effect that that torch over there is giving off um, it is illuminating the back end of the wheel and the reason why this looks so good is actually because of the wheel itself It has clear urethane as you can see so that's why this photo in particular looks awesome with this You can obviously do it with other parts, um, but something that is either yeah, hopefully See-through or glossy will be just as good. Alright now. Let's talk about camera settings first I'm gonna have to turn this big light off as well as that one over there so we get into complete darkness because that is one thing you are going to oh! <gasps> okay back to it so for starters you want to have as little light as possible but sean isn't this video all about having light for this photo yes it is but you need as little as possible because the shutter is open for so long if you have a normal light like the light i have here on it's just going to completely white out the image so you want a very dull light and only a little amount for it to be able to create such shot by the way guys, my autofocus on this is broken, so that's why everything is in and out of focus so much, is because I'm having to do it manually, and it's a pain in the butt. So we're on 1 13th of a second right now, but that is not going to be slow enough. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop it down to about, hmm, maybe about five seconds. Let's start off with five seconds and see how that goes. As you can see, uh, it is completely whited out. So now what we're gonna have to do, because we have the shutter open for such a long duration, we're going to have to compensate with the aperture as well as the ISO. So the ISO is already on as low as it can go for this camera. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump up the aperture to, let's go F18. So let's see how this looks. All right, it's still slightly a little bit overexposed, so let's bring it up. What I'm gonna do is obviously showing you through this camera on that LED screen, LCD screen, not LED, on the back of my Canon 6D, it looks overexposed to you no matter what. 
Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this camera down just over here while I shoot these photos. I'll still talk you through it, but I'll show the images on the screen rather than show you the screen through this lens in turn showing you on your screen. I need to go a little bit darker because remember we're gonna introduce some more light with either this flash moving around or with my camera phone. Camera phone. My phone light torch. Speak English. So we're now on ISO 100, f22 and 3.2 second long shutter. So let's have a look how this image looks. Yes, that is more like it. Uh, so now what I'm gonna do is on the drive, I'm going to set this as a two second timer, which gives me a little time to get up. Um, so obviously the first image still looks pretty cool the way the uh, light is illuminating the wheel, if that's the correct term to use, but it can be much better. So what we're going to do to make it much better is introduce a little more light and get some light streaks. So to do that, we are going to grab, if I reach it, my trusty phone, and we are going to turn the torch on and we're gonna create some light patterns. The way the light patterns work that, as we know now, the longer the shutter is open, the more information it retains of the light. So if I have the shutter open for five seconds and the light starts on here, and within that five seconds, it moves to here, you're gonna get that streak of the light that's traveled across that whole image. Now, if you were to have a, sh a fast shutter, what it's gonna do is it's gonna capture that light there and then, and it's gonna be frozen within the frame. So that's why you wanna have a higher shutter if you're shooting things like action sports, like skate parks and scooters in them. Um, and you wanna have a longer shutter for something like this to cap capture light trails. So let's go ahead and try one of these images again by using the light trail off my phone and see how it looks. Yeah, not bad. I reckon we can add a little more light trails to that though. Oh, that one's not too bad. But see how I kept too, see how I stayed too long within the frame at the start of it that the light is a little bit blocky. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the exact same thing, but I'm gonna move a little bit faster. Yeah, that one's pretty cool. What we're gonna do next is we are going to do the exact same thing, but we're gonna start from behind the wheel. And what I'm also gonna do is introduce my finger to the light. Uh, and what that's gonna do is act as a gel. As you can see, when I put my finger over it, look at that, finger turns red because um, human biochemistry. So by doing that, I'm going to get a red light as well as the clean uh, white bluish light as well. So let's see how that looks. Oh, there we go, have a look at that. So as you can see, the red within the image is when I had my finger over my torch and the obvious, the light blue, clear, whitish uh, light is the light in general. All right, let's do a couple more and see what we can come up with. We'll try some different designs and this is quite spooky. Uh, and yeah, let's try. So what we're gonna do with this next one is instead of changing what we're doing with the light, we're actually gonna change what we're doing with the wheel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna introduce some motion to the wheel uh, and we'll see what that looks like. I can tell you what, I think it's gonna look pretty sick. All right, let's switch things up a bit now. I'm done with my phone light. I can put that over here somewhere. And then I'm going to now use the light that we had over on our fancy uh, container over here. And I'm gonna play around with this a bit more and what that's gonna do is I'm gonna have less light coming in from behind so I can introduce more shadows and stuff so you don't have the constant light coming in from behind. Um, so we can just play with the light a bit more. So instead of me explaining it and not making sense, let's just try it and you'll see the photos. Huh. Oh, would you look at that? You would never have guessed that my camera died again. This time it was my video camera. So the photos had to be cut short, but I do think I touched on everything I needed to. Now I'm not gonna show you exactly how I edit these photos for two particular reasons. One, 
They came pretty damn good straight out of the camera. I honestly don't think they need any editing to them. Maybe some color grading, but that's about it. And also, I'm just not set up to be doing any screen recording to you, so you can see what I do on my screen. I mean, just look behind me. My studio setup right now is my desk chair. This isn't my desk chair. My desk chair, a computer, and then a lamp on top of it. And that's how I filmed the intro of this video. So I was not set up. I was not prepared. So that wraps up this video. I hope you've learned something. Um, and if you want to learn something more or you have any questions about what I've spoken about today, uh, leave the questions in the comments below or even direct message me on Instagram. And remember, remember, if you are inspired by this video, what I want you to do, here's my challenge for you. I want you to take a photo like what we've done tonight and I want you to post it on Instagram or just direct message me on Instagram and show me what you can come up with with what you have at home. But other than that, thanks for sticking around for my first video of this kind. Um, so sorry if it was crap, but it's only going to get better in the future. So thanks again, guys. Have a good night, and I'll see you later. Peace.